and that's half the journey is just starting out. Let me go ahead and start by moving my mic down a little bit closer so you can hear my beautiful voice, my angelic voice. I need to also make sure that I am have I have my chat. For some reason, I do not see it going. So if you're typing, typing away there with your busy little fingers, I do apologize because I'm not paying attention right now. I have not got the chat pulled up. But I'm working on it. So give me just a second there. Tonight, I am not using OBS. I am using Google Hangouts. So we'll see how this works. Let me pop out. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Done. Pop out chat. And I am waiting to see. It's still showing me offline. So where does this pop up? I, I can't see the chat. I'm not even showing that I'm live. If anybody has me on Facebook, message me, please, if you guys do see me. This is a totally new experience for me. I, I'm trying to figure out where it shows up on my, um, where it's showing up, and I do not see chat anywhere. Either that or nobody has typed anything. Even if you have not joined the channel before, type something in the chat just so I know you're out there. I am not seeing it even live so let's oh you know what i wonder if it's because i am in private mode let's see camera no that's not what i want to do this is gonna suck if i can't even I'm testing this. It's showing I have one viewer, but I do not see chat anywhere. So I may actually go back to using OBS. I might end up canceling this and going back to OBS just to make sure that I can see the chat because that's important to me. Let me go to my channel real quick. I'm going to try one more thing. And we'll go to Creator Studio. Makes you want to view my channel. Oh, there I am. I do see it now. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, Lottie. Oh, there I am. I do see it now. Okay. okay. Yes, I hear the echo. Hey, hey Lottie. Rookie mistake. Okay, so tonight I was just going to come in and talk about auctions. I did go to live auction last um, last night. I don't get to make it out to them that often. Hey, what's up, John? Never, never more antiques. Popping out chat. Again, this is uh, new territory for me. I'm usually, usually using OBS, but I thought I would do the whole Google Hangout thing and try to become familiar with it. So I want to talk a little bit about auctions. Um, not only my auction hall, the stuff that I picked up, and it was really a crappy auction yesterday, but I did pick up some items. Some some stuff is going to just be uh, experimental because you guys know how much I like to experiment with different things. And um, I did finally get, uh, I got your message. I just looked down and saw it. Um, but also running auctions on eBay. Uh, I, you know, when I first started listing, let, let's just jump right into that. When I first started doing eBay, and it's, it's only been about a year and a half or so since I've been really hitting it hard, I always did buy it now listings. You know, I go out and I look at the comps, say, oh, yeah, that sells. And back then, I did not look at active listings to see what the competition was. I was just going to see. If I bought this for two bucks, how much can I sell it for? That was all that, that that I really cared about. 
And, you know, fast forward today, you know, there's a lot more to looking at just the comps, but I never even considered doing auctions. You know, I think the one thing that I feared the most was when you go and look at auctions, you see all these things for 99 cents, 99 cents, you know, $3 free shipping. I'm like, how the hell are people doing that? I, I just didn't get it. So auctions kind of always, um, I kind of feared them a bit. But over the last month and a half, I would say, I started doing more and more. And it really started kicking off of those hats. And I think one of the decision makers for doing auctions was the fact that I really didn't know how much an item would go for. So, I, you know, my kind of strategy is aim for the minimum that I would take for that item and set that as my auction start price. And I'll typically run it for two weeks. And if it doesn't sell two weeks, then I'll set it on, buy it now, and go the whole comp method. But this most recent experiment I've um, I've tried, I bought a lot of Care Bears. You know, I don't do a lot of plush, but I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. I paid $21 for a box of Care Bears. And I thought it was a perfect opportunity to run an auction test and not only test the auction itself, but I also decided, you know what, I want to see, you know, what eBay's suggested price, how well does that actually do? Uh, so that's what I did on, on all of them. I had to adjust a couple because I did some lots that there weren't really any comparable auctions on. But I paid $21 for the box right now, and I've still got three or four days left to the auction. Right now, I've got up to $25 in bids on three lots. So you figure I had probably 75 cents an item into these. And I kind of see there there probably is a strategy on auctions that where people are making money. The best thing about auctions uh, really is it's a quick, it's a turnaround. You know, th these eyes, I did not want to sit on these stupid Care Bears. You know, they, I've got a couple of them laying right here. When you take this and this times 25, that's a lot of space. So stuff like that you really don't want to hang on to. So I can see the benefit of doing auctions is hopefully there's somebody out there wanting it and you get a quick turnaround. You know, you list it, put it up, list it, and within seven days it's gone and hopefully you're turning some profit. So if you're doing a, a ton of, I mean, you're going to be talking volume, I think, when you're when you're running some of these auctions, because if you're only making you know three or four dollars profit, hello, Sassy Seller. Hey, um, thanks for joining. Want to make sure I give a shout out to everyone that jumps into the chat. But you know, I think I, I think doing a lot of these cheaper auctions, I think it is a numbers game. You know, where I, I don't mind sitting on something that I I think is going to drive a huge profit. But then again, there's some some items like the, the, my radios that I'm selling. I'm putting those up um, auction as well. And again, it's what's the minimum I want to take for it? Hey, thanks, John. <laughs> I don't get many. I I put out a video the other day, and I ended up with two thumbs up and two thumbs down within the first I don't know four or five hours of me putting it out. Anyway, the. Um, so yeah, I think that's that that is one kind of a strategy I'll play with, you know, doing some doing auctions and getting rid of some or buying items that I think would do um good auction. You know, and th these are the items that I'm not going to want to hold on to like these Care Bears. Um there is money in plush. It's just they they do take up quite a bit of space. But on the flip side, I can shove three of those, you know, 14 inch plush into my eight by eight by eight boxes. And um, if they do go over a pound, I'm saving a little bit. You know, it, it, when they pass that certain threshold, I'm, I'm saving a little bit doing cubic shipping. I find that those eight by eight by eight boxes I get with my eBay coupons, I can ship quite a bit of stuff. And there's a lot of things that I do that are heavier that will fit in those boxes. Hey, what's up, Glenn? Thanks for jumping in. I know it is late there for all y'all in the Midwest, South. I guess South is, is the correct term. But um, I do appreciate you guys jumping in this late. Madison County, Missouri. 
Welcome to the his house. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's why I'm experimenting with those uh, 25 Care Bears, all the auction, not just testing how well auctions will do on those, but also testing the suggested price that eBay tells you. And I know you're going to hear a lot of people say you never want to go with the um, suggested price, but you know you got to go where the market tells you. And I, I do know that even the you know with as much um, issues that eBay's having right now with their listing apps on the phones, with the website, you know their main. Um, they have to be paying attention to the data and there has to be some some substance to that data. Now, the other thing I'm really banking on that there's somebody out there that knows what the hell the data is telling them. A data guy myself, I work with it every day. I, I often find that um, the people that are collecting that data, maintaining that, that data are the ones that should be um, pass that information up. But anyway, I, I'm just gonna test it out and see how well how well it does. So their suggested price starting in at auction. And so far I am about broke. I've just about broke even on that box of Care Bears. And I just know it's gonna bring some profit. I just don't know what that profit is. So that is my talk about doing auctions on eBay. I do not think e eBay auctions are dead, but I think that um, you play around with it and you, you, know, you figure out what strategy works best for you. Okay, again, I went to a live auction last night. I picked up more randomness. It's all sitting here behind me. One thing I'm not going to get too far into, or I'm not going to pull out. I don't know if you guys know what this is right here. This is an appliance dolly. You know, depending on, you know, I would say on average, you're talking buying them new right around $200. Um and that, that one I gave, uh, let's see, I have to look back, look past my pretzel, my beer, and my nachos. Because, yes, I charge it to my bidding card. That's terrible. They shouldn't allow you to do that. Um, I paid $22.50 plus tax $23.85. And then there's a 13% buyer's premium paying with my card. So, um, let's just call it $25 for that. I think I want to sell it local market and I'm going to list it out at about 150 because, you know, as much as I hate selling on local market, um, uh, these bigger, this, some of this bigger stuff I will. And I'm always going to ask a little bit higher than, uh, because I know that they're going to come in with, you know, people talk about lowball offers on eBay if you haven't sold local markets before, you know Facebook, um, they're worse. That's even if you can get them to show up. I, I am not a huge advocate to local markets. I know people do sell things there, but I just it's it's more of a headache for me. I, I would say, I was I gave away freezers. I'm, I I have four dead freezers that I'm trying to give away. You know, use them for feed storage use them for anything storage, take them to the repairman, get them fixed, spend $50, $60 and get them fixed. I just want them out of my hair, um, but I can't give them away. And I finally found somebody that was wanting to take one and it took him two and a half days to get here. So, you know, it, that's just my life here. And I know some places it works really well. You're just going to have to, again, I just say, don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody else's word for it. Use their advice use their guidance, but get out there and try it yourself and see how well you like it. Next thing, I just thought this was kind of weird. I actually paid, uh, it's a, it's a um, shadow box, but <laughs> tell me what you guys think of this. It's got this little girl and boy and they're on a swing and that's actually a piece of a wood that's a stick there with a little branch sticking out in the swing you know they move back and forth inside there i have no idea so i got my little auction number on um but who knows i mean it's kind of cool looking i think <coughs> i have just um 
not really seen anything like it. And you guys know I like to pick up weird shit. So there it is. I'm not telling you that you're going to find this, but I will tell you, um, typically when you pick up weird stuff, you're going to make some money on it. And sometimes you're going to make a lot of money on it. This particular one I paid $5 for. I paid up on it, let me tell you. I have no idea right now. I'm probably going to start out at 30 and uh, one of these days, maybe give it away. But hey, that's that, that's part of the risk. Uh, let's see what else. Maybe I should go. Oh, I, of course, I didn't bring my, my crowbar. I bought this long crowbar. That's going to go local. It's basically you're tearing down houses or something. It's one of those old crow foot crowbars. I gave uh, five dollars for it, and I just um, sorry I didn't bring it in. Uh, let's see, a mirror. Oh, I'm gonna have to go get that. Let, if you don't mind, I'm gonna step away for like. 20 seconds, if that. Typically, I like to be a little bit better prepared, but I forgot I left these sitting out, out back. So, okay. I'm going to make myself some room here. It's a... There you can see me twice. This has got some size. This will not be an eBay sale. It is... Um, See my empty beer bottles there in the mirror. It's a mirror with these little shelves on it. On the back, I mean, it's framed almost like a photo. It's got dates on here, handwritten 71, 65. Um, some cleaning information. 1976, I didn't see this one. I don't know. There's a, a April 21st, 1925. I don't know what any of these dates correlate to, but um, I don't think it's quite that old. I'm trying to look at the nails on it to see if that gives me any, indi any, any indication. It really looks like they're just round headed nails. So, um, I mean, it's pretty well constructed. I don't know how much of that you can you can see on the construction of those corners. It's pretty well, well done. I'll tell you, I paid five dollars for. No, let me let me double check. I'm gonna seven fifty a piece I, for this. There is some damage to it. This one, I'm, I'm gonna do a little bit more research. See if I can uh, tie it down to a closer age. But I'm going to flip this automatically back on the local auction. There are two lot. Uh, there are two auction houses. One of them is live auction, which is where I picked this stuff up. It's the next town over, and then we have an online auction. Um, the black looks new. Oh, the back. The back looks new. Yeah. I, I'll see my... I'll hold that up just a little bit closer without knocking my drink over here. And th those are my backups. I always got to have a backup. And maybe you guys can recognize anything on this. I, it's, it's not terribly new. But I guess it depends on what you're calling new. I can't see what I'm showing. But, um, yeah, I, 
I honestly, it's going to be experiment with me. Um, I know that there's, there's completely different buyers between somebody that goes to a live auction and somebody that goes to sits and does the online auctions like I do. But I know there's a lot of resellers that go to the live auction as well. Most of those own shops, antique, whether it be an antique shop, you know, have booths at antique malls, furniture stores, and whatnot. Um, so I'm gonna I'm, some of these items I'm gonna take, and, I, and I've got some others I want to take as well, and flip at the flip on the online auction, and you know, just get some experience with the buyer buyer's premium. I know. When you're selling on auction, you're paying quite a bit of percentage. Um, the online auction here is a tier structure. So depending on how, you know, the first, say, $50 or whatever is this percent. 50 to 100 is this percent. So it's kind of a stepping. If you Let's, let's just say the number is 40 and then it drops down to 30 for 50 to 100. You're going to pay... 40 for that first um, $50 and then 30% for the 50 to 100 and so on. Hey, thanks. Thanks for jumping in, Glenn. I does appreciate it. So $750 a piece on for that. And this one too. I'll be honest, this looks cheap. But the thing that is weird about it is just the way it was framed. And I I know that the, the frame isn't the, it's not the best quality, I guess. I mean, it's pretty sturdy. It's not, it's not anything super recent, but I would say it's fairly, I don't know, maybe 80s, 70s. But um, 750 again, this one I'm gonna put in at the local auction. Maybe this one I might actually do eBay just because of its size. It's small enough to go eBay. Okay. Oh, where did I? I bought a bunch of silver. It was. I, I wish I would have brought that. I'll have to do a video on that because I have to do a lot of research. It was like quarters and um, pennies, and there's like little, little like um, pieces of. They were silver, but they were like stamps, and I, I, I wish I would have brought those in. I, I really need to. I left them out in the car in the glove box, but um, I gave ten dollars, and you know what? I probably paid too much for that amount of silver, but you know, so be it. It's, I'll know more when I when I look and see what what exactly I have. But I know there's a lot of old coins in there, quarters, dimes. Um, I don't think everything was silver coins and they're all pre, what was it? I can't remember the date. What was it? A uh, 70. If you guys know the date that they stopped putting silver in coins, I should know that off the top of my head, but I don't deal enough with coins. Hey, Steve Brucha Casey. I hope I got that right. <laughs> so I, I will definitely, I'll have to put that in a future video. Just cover it just to do a quick, cover on the co the coin remnants that i got uh 64 thank you lonnie so i i know all these coins were pre-64 i paid ten dollars for a small bag of it but there's other stuff in there like i said I, I think i'll cover that in another video coming up what exactly i picked up and um see if that ten dollars was worth the buy i covered the shadow box the statue Again, just because I thought it was odd. And this might, this might even be just a um, Pier 1 piece. I don't know. And I know it is missing some pieces. These the Basically, the wings come out. It almost looks like... Um, the Angel of War. Wasn't there an angel of war? John John might be able to tell me, give me a clue who this might represent. And I probably got the wings on completely backwards. They fit better one way or the other. He 
he's actually stepping on somebody's head. You can see right down there. And it is missing something right here. And I would almost wonder, I don't even know, I don't even know what would go, what would be sticking out from underneath his foot. But it's really weird because, oh, it's like a demon. Because if you look at his head here, and you circle around, Michael, thank you. And you look around here, there's a tail sticking, at, you know, here's his back leg. And I could not tell you, I don't know what would go here. And here, but you know, there's holes there. So it is not a complete piece. It's got some wood weight to it. It's made out of wood. And I want to say he probably had a spear because if you look, there, it looks like his hand should be holding something. I have not done research on this at all, but nobody else was taking it, and I ended up picking it up for $5. So, <laughs> you know me. This will probably be sitting back there for quite some time decorating the... The faux fireplace, but I'm probably going to list it as is. A sword. You're probably right, Phil. Um, the next thing is a flat of miscellaneous. I love their descriptions. I paid $15 for this. And I don't do a lot of stuff like this this is a miscellaneous i like buying miscellaneous boxes um but <laughs> i don't even know I, i've never looks like some vintage uh hand embroidered uh that wouldn't be embroidered but just some hankies handkerchief handkerchiefs these again, this one is, uh, looks like there's some crochet going around along the edges. Um, another embroidery piece. I mean, this, I mean, what do you do? Just do put vintage. Have any of you guys ever dealt with any cloth like this? I know I have an old fan that is supposedly from the 1920s. It has a note in it from saying it was at so-and-so. Hello, Cindy. Thanks for jumping in. I am live and successfully tonight. I know the other, the last time it was a little um, rough. I couldn't even get started. But anyway, some vintage hankies came in this lot. I haven't listed the one I have over there, the fan and the, the handkerchief that came from somebody's wedding back in the 20s. But um, it's one of those things this winter, now that I'm not going to have to deal with ice cream anymore. The season is coming to an end. I probably got about another month that I'll be um, helping out with that. And then I'll be clearing out a bunch of this uh, stuff that I've been using. Uh, doily, hanky, crochet. Thanks, Steve. What else in the box? Uh, what, do they, what do they call these? They put your receipts on them. And there's no indication of any age on that. But who knows? I might have to start taking receipts for everything just so I have a use for it. These, I mean, is there really a market for these? I got these old um, address books. Somebody had marked a dollar on them at one point. New in package, NIP old stock, address books. I know there's got to be a market for those out there somewhere. Not, but we'll see. Uh, not the greatest condition. Uh, British West Indies, uh, West Indian Airways. It's a matchbook. And it looks like it has somebody wrote in it. But it's, it's a... It's got these cool matches in it. Hankies, I wash by hand and then iron them 
still while still lightly damp so the they stiffen usually i bundle them together about 20 to a lot i've gotten upwards to 100 for vintage ones like that wow thanks green thrifty life how much do you want the michael statue shipped um message me later and um I, I might just give you a really, really, really good deal for that, John. But uh, matches in there. An old touch, uh, what's your like to touch push button phone? Again, I don't do a lot of phones, but it's a trim line. Haven't even pulled comps on it. If, the, if, if there's an even, if people even want these old push button ones, I know some of the other ones are. Pretty collectible. Hello, Susie, Arizona. Thanks for jumping in. So a phone. Again, this is part of that $15 lot. This is really what makes auctions fun is when you can, when you can um, dig into a box of history like this. I, I figured that, John. Uh, let's see. What's this? This is a comb and brush. There's a piece of cardboard in there, so it's... Thought it was a, a gift for baby. I'll show it to you here in just a second. I'm getting the what somebody's perceived value. Baby comb. This stuff. This stuff must be coming out of somebody's uh, antique shop. I know a couple of them have closed down. But it's just a little baby brush and comb. Again, I do not. Um, I have no idea on this one. I mean, I don't do a lot of this stuff, but that's why I buy a lot of it is just so that I can experiment. I find that if you only buy the things that everybody tells you to, you miss out on a lot. And and one of the good things about me being part-time is, at least I feel, this is my own personal opinion, is um, I can take chances on some of this stuff that uh, maybe – you know, some people wouldn't. And I'll tell you whether it did good for me or not. The next was a, a lot of pictures. And most of them are children. I mean, I kids, teens. I guess not. There's a little baby picture. I won't go through all of them. But, um... These will all be lauded up. Man, talking about a beard. People think they have nice beards. That one will give um, Bearded Picker a run for his money right there. And I just dropped a, a lot of them. This one I thought was kind of odd. Look how small that is. I'll have to find out why did they make small photo. This photo is this small on such a large card. Maybe that was this is the size of card that the machine came on. Um there's one interesting I thought in here. There's one with it, somebody in there. Oh, this one has her little dog. I don't know if you can see that right over here. That is like layers of beard. That beard had faces of its own. Let me tell you, the face had a beard and the beard had a face of its own. Let's just revisit that. Tell me that face doesn't that beard doesn't have a face of its own. <laughs> it looks like it's sticking its tongue out at you. Okay, just catch that with the chat. Um, they don't seem to move at all very fast. I have seen some crazy comps. Oh, is that for the photos? Yeah, I I have no idea. But you know, fifteen dollars for the box. I figured you know I could probably get maybe ten or fifteen for the phone. Um, the hankies, I could, I could go almost a hundred dollars for vintage ones like that. I'm, I'm, I'm taking your word for that. Um, green Th thrifty life. Here's some of the larger ones. Some I'm not in the greatest condition. I can't decide how that, what that guy thinks of life. This one was sitting there so long, it looks like he, he was either um, 
he's almost fallen asleep. Or he was partaking in the smoke. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you know this guy right here? Or or you knew this guy right here? Most of these are... I was looking at the backs of some of them. Um, most of them were either Wisconsin or um, California. That's actually a decent smile right there. Looks like the bailiff of the old... <laughs> now... I had to look twice to find his beard there. It's like, why even have a beard? I mean, it's like neck beard all the way. Now people try to shave their neck beard off. Oh, the one that was smiling was a lady. And uh, let's see. I mean, just judging by the clothes, I mean... Just a few of them. So yeah, fifteen dollars for this lot of photos. I don't know, maybe between the two sizes, maybe thirty or forty. I know in the thrift store they're going for a buck a piece. If that, I mean, if you can get them that cheap. So you know, we'll see what happens. Um, the next thing we're not going to go through all these. I'm just going to say. What's in the box? What's in the box? First of all, I paid $10 for this box. Postcards. And you know what? This is something that I've always wanted to try. Like Legos, I wanted to try those. And I am with Lonnie now. I don't think I want to see another Lego again. Um, oh, there's there's photos in here, too. Hey, ding, ding, ding. Susie Arizona made a sale. What, what? There's actually some photos in here. Um, what is the, what is the red heart? I could sell the box itself. Man, check out them legs. Sorry if that is, um, disrespectful I want the lady with the dog photo what oh there I see your lady with a dog and I raise you three ladies with a dog and I'm trying to figure out, you can't really see it except for in this. This is the same, many of these are the same person. The heart right there on the, is. it almost looks like a pen. Is there any significant? There's the one with her and her. Okay, so... Those snuck in there in my box of postcards. Most of these I don't think are of a lot of age. I want to see if I can pick out some of these that. And some of these I've got like, I mean, unless I have the only planters peanuts postcards on eBay. If I do, and there there's a collector's uh, market for them, I am in the money. I don't see a uh, date anywhere on these, but there I've got quite a bit of duplicates in there, except for that one right there. Oh my goodness! Ten 
tell me if you've ever seen Mr. Peanut on the Etch a Sketch. Again, I'm in the money because I got multiples of those. Well, we I think I found out who these postcards belong to. More photos. Those will go in my photo collection that I have back there. MacArthur Heart Pin Survey says I am I have no idea. <laughs> Hey, Sam Dallas, I don't think I said hello to you yet. Um, Beauty Bay. Oh, this is this is local here. This is Lake Coeur d'Alene. This is just right down the road from me. Oh, these are some decent. Um, that bridge is still there. I think they've repaved it. Etch a sketch sells for three ninety nine. Man. And if you question what you're sending your message on, flip it over and it'll tell you you're sending it on a postcard. I'm just looking through some of these to see if I, I have no idea about postcards. I know these are, I mean, I'm just judging maybe 70s here. This is Banff, Alberta, Canada, just by looking at the clothes and the um, I've got some Oregon ones in here, Vir Virgin Islands, Palm Desert. Bob Hope's Palm Springs home, if you're interested. Las Vegas. Looks like they did a lot of... Um, Western United States travel. There's Seattle in there. It's very interesting on this that you'd have a Seattle postcard without the Space Needle. I'll have to look at a current um, from Lake Union. I'll have to look at a current. Oh. Interesting. Okay. You would think you drove over the bridge once in 1999. This building right here almost looks like this one right here. So this may be pre-Space Needle, maybe? I'll, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to swear to that. Um, New York. Some of these are... I've got original cast recording New York Rock by Yoko Ono. The real reason the Beatles broke up. Showgirls. Um, I don't know. I Again, I paid... Uh, ten dollars for the box of postcards. I think I did okay. I think these are definitely going to be very long tail items, unless I, I may just lot them up. I'm not really big into doing long tail on, um, Disneyland Hotel if you've never been there, but um, I, I'm not really big in doing long tail low priced items. I, yeah, I think if if that was if that was your niche, I think you'd do fine because you'd have it, it, again it would be a numbers um game. Burn Yoko Ono. And I'll send you 10 bucks. I would do I would burn Yoko Ono's postcard on air for Altoids. I just like the artwork. Again, I don't. I don't think there's much. Um, Altoids hasn't been around that long, have they? Some muscle car. Um, anyway. Oh, look at that. The old stone church in Lewis. This one looks old. Lewisburg, West Virginia. 
Uh, pre nineteen sixty two for the Seattle. Gotcha. Mount Vernon, Virginia. So yeah, there's um a lot of postcards for ten dollars that I don't even know what I want to do with yet. Um, if any of you guys do postcards, let me know how well you do them. Have you tried them? Have you um, done well? And what what is the? It looks like I have a wide range of content here, so I might just list them out and see which ones sell faster, or maybe which ones don't sell at all. The good thing about it this winter. Right there is probably over well over a hundred listings that if I just got bored and ran out of stuff to to list, um, I have stuff to put on. The only other thing I have left, I paid seven dollars and fifty cents for. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not going to go through all the postcards. <laughs> But I just realized this is a, I, I turned around and um, 86 Expo, anything spectacular in there. Um, seven sacred pools. This is up near Hannah. Chris took us here on Friday to play in the waterfalls. It was just beautiful. You would love the bamboo forest. Rod, Popeye's Postcards is a good channel to watch for po I, I will definitely check that out. But anyway, yeah, my little three box is now empty, except for the one with the sheep. Rush hour in Scotland. Bah. That's like the Longhorns in, in Texas. One time, you know, my dad, he always liked to find the sh the shortcuts everywhere. And I don't know where he got his maps. I remember, I think it was down, we went down to Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, it might, it might have been on the way to Padre Island. I don't, I don't remember. It was somewhere down there in Texas. My memory fades me as I was just a young child. And we ended up getting stuck on some dirt road waiting for a herd of longhorns to pass by. Not only that, here it is. I don't know. I don't know if we were crossing a runway or if it was a road at the end of the run runway, but it's late at night, later on that day. And all of a sudden we see this plane coming down over our car. <laughs> and my dad was about to freak out. But... That that's just how my dad was, or is, or was. Okay, the only other thing, one more thing tonight. I'm, I'm probably going to do this local. Bought this Lexmark. I mean, it's not. I don't think it has a ton of value in it. Really, the only reason I bought it, I paid seven fifty for it, and it's open. It's still got the ink. Um, it, it's, it's never been taken out of the box. This is how it was shipped. Uh, what is in there? I don't even know what. Oh, that's the AC plug. It's still got the cardboard around the plug itself. Yes, um, if, if you guys, well, I mean, anybody that watches me is definitely already a, a subscriber of Lonnie, I know. So I don't need to tell you how great um, Lonnie's show is and how much of a wealth of knowledge he is. And the thing that really, um, the thing I appreciate most about him is his honesty in reselling. I mean, that's one of the reasons, you know, I, I like doing, you know, the, the similar things. I like to, um, I'll show you the crap I pick up. I'll show you what I sell. Um, and I'll show you the stuff that I sell. I, it's easier for me to show everything that I sell because I am doing this part time. I don't, I don't have, you know, the, the volume that, um, Lonnie's pushing, but I, 
it, it, it's all honesty game. You know, you can see through the bullshit on excuse that, but uh, when you watch some channels, even though they do pass some nuggets of information here and there, a lot of times is it's, uh, I'm not going to say it's false. I'm just going to say it's not 100% a true picture of what's going on live as a reseller is difficult even though i'm doing this part-time i am putting in sometimes some full-time hours just to, uh just to try to manage it and um it, it 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 is a little work anybody that tells you that this that being a reseller i can't even talk to doing it full-time is an easy job and there's any get get rich quick uh ways about it they're they're lying to you flat up uh you can watch you know people going through youtube or going through ebay and and showing screenshots of what things sold for all day long but that doesn't typically mean that you're going to find those items there where you are um the best thing to do is just to go out there and give it a go experiment you know odd stuff that's that's what i love picking up um but i also like picking up things that i know that sells and the the best thing about watching a lot of <coughs> um a, a lot of those those soul videos just to kind of put in the back of my mind file file it away and hopefully even as i get older that i'll be able to retain some of it uh, Lonnie and John's group, huge knowledge, minimal BS. Yes, if you guys are not members of um, the Facebook group, uh, you can go and put a, a link to it. Uh, this Week in Reselling Facebook group. It is a great group of people over there. And it's um, we don't tolerate the – the uh, there's a lot of – well, you know, I, I go and, and talk to – you know. I responded to somebody in another Facebook group today uh, about um, basically a customer. Tell me what you guys think. I'll, I'll tell you how I responded. And then let me know if you're watching this later, let me know down in the comments below. Um, a customer bought something and paid for it. I got it all packed up and I was about to hit hit purchase shipping label and they sent me a message to cancel. What would you do? <laughs> and people were like, cancel and block, um, call eBay and, and cancel block and call eBay and have them uh, and report them for abusing something or other. I mean, you just cancel. That, that's my thought. You just cancel. You know, I don't understand the whole concept of blocking customers or potential customers. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like you have this mentality that that one guy out of the millions of people that come to eBay's site is going to come to you and do whatever they did, and then they're going to habitually come back to you specifically and harass you. I mean, if that is the case, then yeah, block the person. That's the only way. If they come back to you three times doing the exact same thing, that's what I would say. Block the, block the customer. I just don't understand some of this petty stuff that people are blocking customers for. I'm like, damn, you guys think pretty highly of yourself. But um, that's the thing. If there's any advice that I see that's rampant in a lot of, the, lot of these groups, any advice that I could give to you is – you know, you're running a business. Look at it as a business. Don't look at it as one transaction. You know what? You get a return. You know, it sucks. I, I agree. It sucks to have to see hear that 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 tone that comes through and you got a mess and you're like, oh my God, am I gonna get a return? And then you see that it's a return, like, okay, deal with it and move on. Look at your your business as a business, not that just that transact that one transaction. And um, you know just knock the emotions out of it. Go by the way. Yeah, it sucks. I don't want to deal with it, but you know what? I sold a, a radio last week that I, I, I made 80 bucks off of and now I'm returning. Um, and I lost, you know, I, I lost the return shipping, which on a different item that might've only been four bucks. I didn't lose 
the um the original sale price you know they paid it for me i'm getting the item back i pay i you know i, I i'm the only thing i'm out is a return shipping and i'm more than likely going to sell that item again i sold software it was that mac uh, art explosion software i sold it to somebody and that was my return this week changed my mind didn't need it you know damn well that he took it he bought it he went and installed it on his damn mac that's why i am anti i am i i am not an i fan i don't trust you apple users <laughs> macintosh users um but you know they, he loaded it on his on a hard drive and decided he didn't need it anymore so he shipped it back but you know what? It, I'll turn it around, I'll sell it, and I'll eventually find somebody that'll give me the price I want for it. I understand, though, especially if someone isn't selling much, first sale of the day, then it gets canceled. Inexperienced seller is going to take that hard. <laughs> I did have to go there, Lonnie. But, you know, it, that's the thing. I'm, I'm still like, I'm still ahead. Even with the with all the returns I've had and I just shot a video today on return specifically. So, um, look forward to that, <laughs> but you know, I, uh, my Apple sub is just until it gets shit done. Yes. LOL. I'm watching you on my MacBook pro, you know, more power to you, uh, MacBook, um, users. If you need some free uh, art explosion software, I'm your guy. Check out my store on eBay. It'll be listed in a week. But um, yeah, I, I here's the thing. You, you, you hear a lot of these people talking bad about the returns and how, you know, I know I, I've heard people say 30% of all items, there's a 30% return rate on e-commerce. And you really have to um you, you really have to dig deeper than just a blanket 30 percent and just a, a little clue um 65 from the statistics that i read 65 percent of those returns are not seller initiate i mean they're they weren't caused by the seller they i mean the buyer they were caused by something the seller did and the, the majority of those reasons are uh, merchant sent the wrong item uh, the item was damaged in transit or the item just didn't work or, or you know it, it was dead on arrival I yeah you know Lonnie people tell me that I, I just I'll tell you where I, I I'll tell you where I have the issue with it and that is iPhone I, I, and iTunes um, being a developer, I don't like the control, I guess. Yeah, 1.3% for the last year, Sam. I mean, I think mine ended up being at, at four, but I will be honest, most of that percentage was because of me. So when you hear these people saying, you know, and, to, and giving advice not to do returns because the return rate is 30%, that 30% is pretty much an inflated number. And hey, thanks, um, Steve. I appreciate you jumping in. That number is, is inflated to what it actually is. If you're doing it's simple to, to minimize your returns. Yeah, you're gonna have them once in a while, but it's simple. Take good photos and don't just take good photos of the good side. I mean, if I just took good photos of my good side. I would um, be knocking women off me left and right. But, you know, when you look at the whole picture, it's, it's, it's I, I want to say my, I, I don't know what my good side is, but th that's the thing. Take your photos, make sure you cover everything, including the flaws. Make sure you point out the flaws in your description. People say, well, the, the buyers don't read the descriptions. They do. You know, one of the things that I've been doing, um, doing i follow lonnie's example is using uh videos in my listings and it's really been good on, especially on the electronics these these radios that i that i have it you know i can tell somebody that the first the one radio i sold the first um eighth of an inch you turn the knob 
it's loud or loud hum and then it once you turn it up that that hum isn't there i can I can describe that in, in description, but putting the video out there, I mean, it speaks volumes. So, I mean, that that's a great tool, but just make sure that you're completely honest. I mean, if you are an honest business man or woman, um, you can very much minimize your chance of returns. I, I agree, you know, some of the statistics I saw out there, um, surprisingly, didn't show clothing as the highest return rate. I mean, I, I think electronics was higher than clothing in there. And you know, that's overall. Um, I'm gonna, I, I might as well not put my video that I put up, put together today. But uh, the other thing, your number one um, largest on online uh, site, Amazon, they sell a lot of crap product. So when you sell a lot of crap product, you're going to have a lot of returns. I mean, that just that's just natural. But that that is um, that that's just how it's going to work. And we have you see YouTube creators out there. Um, you know that that there's huge business out there getting other people to follow that business model of going over to China and buying stuff pennies to the dollar and turn around and selling it on Amazon and it's crap product. So, I mean, I, I think that's going to escalate the uh, return number as well. But if you're running your eBay business, honestly, I really don't think that you're, you're going to lose the bank. You're not going to go out of business by offering free returns. And that's just kind of where I stand. Oh, I'm dying to catch up. Hey, Shane, thanks for jumping in. Uh, yeah, I heard the rain. Oh, I, I'm just catching up. Yeah, I got the tutorial bookmark, the video uploads for machinery. I'm going to go there. The, uh, are you talking about listing? It's, it's, it's a su super simple process. I set up a, you know, I just set up, set up a su separate YouTube channel just for that. And, um, it, the video, the whole video thing, and again, if, if you're dealing with working um, equipment, where you know anything that some some items you just have to experience to get the full effect. So anyway, that's the thing. Run your business honestly, and you don't have to worry about you know returns getting out of hand. That's uh, that you're going to have idiots out there, but you know what? You have idiot resellers too. It goes both ways. But um, I'm hoping one of the big things I'm hoping with all this, a lot of the changes that I feel if, you know, and you know, we're trusting eBay's word on it is, um, the, you know, putting things in place to help protect us sellers from the bad Apple buyers out there. But, I think, first of all, I, I think it's a good move on some of these changes eBay is doing to kind of weed out some of those bad eBay sellers out there as well. I mean, that's what we want to do. We, we want to make sure that for those of us that are running an honest eBay business, that um, that our uh, that we're not stained by other people's actions because they don't... Um, <laughs> I love eBay, but Rod takes it to the next level. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do a, a a theme song, I guess, coming forward. But um, I I, I want to see some of those bad sellers out of it because that's the only way that eBay is going to improve any negative. Um, if people think of eBay in any kind of negative connotation, I think weeding out some of the bad, um, the bad sellers out there is only going to make it better. And it's the people that are blocking customers. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I, I shouldn't just blanket all that. I just, I just, I, it just, I, I try to give good advice when I'm out there on those, those um, Facebook groups. And then I just ended up, ended up getting in a pissing match with people. 
And I finally have to end it saying, yeah, let's just agree to disagree. But, and I try to get my last word in and, um, and move on. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks for jumping in and watching. I, I, I'll keep you posted on hopefully, well, I know on my next uh, What Soul video, you're going to see how much I've made so far on that lot of Care Bears and <laughs> rotted eBay sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Yeah, I know the tune. I, I really do love it. It's perfect for me. I tell you what, I've tried Poshmark. I've tried Etsy. Um, I've tried local markets and... For the type of business I want to run, I, it, none of the other ones compare. Um, I, I, I uh, months ago I saw Shane's video on he was going to experiment or or he was switched into where he was going to list different items across instead of not necessarily cross posting. Um, I think that's th that's a good way to go if you're going to use the other platforms. I am not. A very pretty fiddle player just got home. Y'all have a great night. Hey, have a good night, Phil. Thanks for jumping in. Um, but I, 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 th there's not the volume on Poshmark. There's not the volume on Etsy. There's not the volume, and I'm talking about the traffic on Facebook, local marketplace, in your local, um, lo local Facebook buy sell trade groups. I think there there's there is a there are items for those for Facebook, um, Poshmark and Etsy. I'm, I've ran Poshmark. I've ran similar items on both eBay and Posh, and I had better success on eBay. And I think that's just because of the volume. Um, I I haven't tried Macari, and. I don't know if it's politically correct to say that I think it's kind of a ghetto. I, I, so I won't say that. I, I just have this. Maybe it's maybe it's it's just the the advertisement I saw was um, geared towards a different generation. But I just um, I agree with you about eBay Rod. Just dial back about five percent. Um, but yeah, I. I just think I think people are going to be surprised when you when you hear all these people talking about jumping ship from eBay and going to other um, platforms. I think they're going to re really be surprised, and they're already seeing it. That you know, where you see eBay, everyone say eBay is trying to be like Amazon. Well, Poshmark and um, local Facebook marketplace. Oh, have a good night, Susie. Thanks for jumping in. I appreciate it. Um, th they're trying to be like eBay. They're trying to be like Amazon. And as they get a little bit more of the market, you're going to see fees incorporated if they are, aren't already. You're going to see, um, you know, shipping is, is going to change. There's going to be a lot more going in there because in order for them to build the infrastructure that to grow, that money's got to come from somewhere. Um, on Macari, sellers are not as good as they send stuff in Walmart bags. Oh, I believe it, Shane. But I mean, that's the thing. If in order for them to grow, they're going ha going to have to build an infrastructure to do so. They cannot build that infrastructure without charging fees or increasing fees. As they build it in, in for the infrastructure, that includes employees to maintain that infrastructure. That in, in includes database maintenance. That includes building in some sort of customer service, um, coders, programmers, um, people to help, you know, teams to make decisions on what changes are going to be made to improve this? I mean, there's going to have to, there's going to be an increased amount of cost involved to to in order that to grow to grow. So people are going to people are going to see that that that's the only thing I'm going to say. I, I I would not jump ship on, from eBay to go to some of these other smaller platforms just for that reason because 
you know, sooner or later, they're going to be in the same boat Ebates in. They're all trying to fight for part of the market. Macari fees are higher than Ebates. Oh, really? I have not looked at Macari. I just think it's... I said a word. I, I, I said what I thought about it earlier without... I don't know. It's 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 just like I'm trying to think. It's like Macari to eBay is the dollar store to Walmart. Or the dollar store to Macy's. I don't know. That's how that's where I kind of see it. But I, that's why I haven't even I, I I haven't even tried it. So I shouldn't say anything bad about Macari or not recommend it. It's just, it just doesn't seem to want to be part of. But anyway, that's that's where I stand. Um, how are your posh experience? I'm pretty much, um, I I gave it a good college try, but I I think there's a, a there's a false message out there that you can drive higher prices on Posh on clothing than you can on eBay. I don't believe that to be true. I think that you know, on any platform, if you're selling the right items, you're gonna draw a higher price. But you're, you have just as many people over there that are looking for deals and making you lowball offers as probably, I would say almost more over there than you do on eBay. People like to complain about lowball offers. I just look at it as an entry to um, negotiation. But it seems like every item um, that every transaction I've done over there ha had an offer involved where I have a lot of eBay items that just sell for the price. <laughs> and I'm not into the social thing. You know, I... It's, it's, but you know, I, I do this part time. I call myself an eBay hobbyist and I don't have time to sit and join parties or, you know, take in 30 minutes a day to, to share and like things. And, um, it's, it's not, it's not that, I don't know. It, I'm, I'm, I'm finding that it's not for me and I'm about to probably pull everything off of Macari. I pretty much pulled everything off of Etsy too. You know, I, I think that people are coming to eBay a lot more for vintage items than they are Etsy. I, I, I leave Etsy for craft items and handcrafted stuff. I think that's a good, good platform for that. But, um, but it's, it's, for vintage stuff, I, I still think eBay is a place to go for that. And I, I, I honestly, I honestly think that that's where people are going. People that are looking for that vintage, whatever, they're going to eBay first because that's really, you know, I think that's really what eBay is known for: find the stuff that you couldn't can't find anywhere else. Um, Rise <laughs> Shane. Loves Amazon as much as Rod loves eBay. Uh, eBay is fun. Eight books on Amazon last hour, 119. Amazon is my fast cash stream. You know, I do a lot of, um, I have a lot of books sitting out there. I don't, I don't list a ton out there. I do all my stuff merch fulfilled just because when I first started, I was making some money on the back end on shipping. I would not do anything larger than a book. Merch fulfilled though, because they just don't give you the allowance for shipping. That's a, that's one thing negative about um, about merch fulfilled. I have not learned. Um, I, I I I'll be honest with you. I actually looked up items today when I was in at Walmart to see if I could find anything that I could try my first experiment on uh, FBA. But I struck out. I mean, I, I found some items I could have made a couple bucks an item on, but it, it just, 
it just wasn't worth it to me. I want to see a little bit larger profit before I give it a shot. Um, but I'll definitely be checking it out. It's something that I want to venture into just to have another outlet out there. But I, I will still, I think I will still always prefer um, eBay over, even over Amazon just because of all the political stuff and how fast things change. And a, and a lot of that is just because, again, I tie it back to me being part time. I don't, I don't want to worry full time about, you know, what is changing on Amazon as far as restrictions and and um, the rules that change. I, I just, I just haven't wanted to venture out and, and worry about that. Anyway, this has been a lot longer than I anticipated. I appreciate everybody that hung out. Uh, again, I picked up some weird crap, explained the, uh, auctions I'm, I'm experimenting with and, um, my feelings on every platform and, and expressing my devoted love for the platform known as eBay. Anyway, I, I appreciate it all. I appreciate y'all hanging out. I'm going to clean up this room and, Go list something, you know, I, I don't want to knock out these five things tonight. And I think I have four or five sales going out uh, in the morning. So anyway, we'll catch y'all later. Have a good night, morning, afternoon, wherever in the world you are. Peace out.